Good morning, everybody, and a very happy Sabbath to you all. We thank you that you have chosen to worship with us today. Uh, you could have been somewhere else, especially with the many services that are now online around the world. But I truly believe that the Holy Spirit has brought you and I together to worship together today. So we just want to thank you wherever you are at the moment, whatever um, country that you're in, we thank you that you've come to worship with us. We want to give a huge thank you to our children for their wonderful efforts. You know, through the week, they've been blessing us with songs and skits and all sorts of different things. And they've been such a blessing. You know, people say that the children are the, the future of the church. I always say that they are the now church. Mm -hmm. So children, we, we want to thank you for everything that you've done for us through this week. You know, I was listening just um, a few moments ago to young Jaden preaching. Mm. And I thought, do we, do we really need Pastor Ray to preach today? Or should we keep, keep Jaden going? <laughs> We want to thank you for that message that you bless us with. Children, keep doing all this for the Lord. When you worship the Lord and you keep doing all these things for him, God is going to bless you in a very special way. So thank you to all the parents that have helped them to prepare all the way through the week for all the different services. We truly thank you. We're now going to have a, an opening prayer as we continue and begin our service. So I'd just like to invite you to all bow your heads wherever you are as we seek the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, um, what a such a blessing it is that we can be with you here on your Holy Sabbath day, a day that you have set apart, that we can come to worship you. Father, we haven't come to entertain you or to be entertained. We've come to bring ourselves before you to worship you to recognize that you are our God, that you are the creator. And so, Lord, you have promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, that you will be in the midst. So we, by the truth of your word, we know that you are with us now. And we ask in a very special way that as we worship you, that every one of us that is listening to this service will be blessed, that will be changed, that will be better prepared for your soon coming kingdom. We see the signs around us and we truly believe that Jesus is coming very, very soon. And so, Father, we're excited and we're looking forward to that day. We want to thank you, Lord, for the messages that we have been given by your servant, Pastor Ray Patrick, through this week. Lord, bless him as he speaks to us shortly. And Lord, may you prepare us for the soon coming kingdom is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Afternoon. Is it afternoon? It is afternoon. Five, mm -hmm. 12 o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank, um, 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 and I can't remember the name, yeah. <laughs> uh, the person that's, that did the music. And I want to thank you for your music. The music this week has been exceptional. We want to thank God. Hallelujah for, for the words in song. Uh, I want to also thank Pastor Phil Pott for his interesting introduction after he rebuked uh, me for the youngsters preaching better he tried to correct himself <laughs> um, uh, um, um, and <laughs> but uh, he's right this morning we have a dynamite word for you um but before we get into this morning um which is our final message together a couple of things i want to mention um i want to thank those of you that have been praying for me um we don't do revivals without prayer and i know that this week God has been with us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, I felt the prayers, even some nights when I came tired after teaching all day, I actually felt the power while I started preaching and I knew it was the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I want to thank you all for your prayers and for calling me by name. Secondly, I want to thank those of you that trusted me uh, with your problems and your prayer requests. Um, I'd have you know that myself and my prayer warriors, one is whom is Pastor Linda, uh, our SEC prayer warrior, um, has been lifting those up in prayer. Amen. And we believe that your breakthrough is on the way. Last Amen. night, myself and Mike Johnson lifted some more up um, as we prayed on Prayer on the Line on Adventist Radio London. And so we're grateful that you trusted us with your prayer request. For those that called me and, and we pray together, I want to say that the breakthrough, hallelujah, is not on the way. The breakthrough is here. Yeah, act, yeah. As if, act as if you have the faith the size of a mustard yeah. seed. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because now this lockdown is easing up. Brethren, 
We need to take our testimonies out of this place. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now go uh, social distancing. Amen. But mm. go into the community and let people know. Um, the young lady that's with me that, that filmed the little ad that we had, she she gave out uh, way over, I don't know, 200 books or so during this lockdown time. Much more. Uh, much more. She's saying much more. And so I'm grateful. And, and it's interesting. I was asking if people were, she's knocking on doors or giving it out to people and they're taking the book. And I'm saying, in literally in lockdown. And um, and I just believe God is about to do something extraordinary as we come out of this pandemic. I don't think we went through all of this lockdown and all of these deaths just to continue life as normal. And I hope the church understands that, um, that we cannot do things the way we used to. Our first service back in the sanctuary should be our praise and worship time. Come on now such as never before. And we need to sign off and let the powers of evil know that we ain't going away this easy. We're back. Amen. We're back with a vengeance. Amen. Amen. Um, well, um, if you don't know, I got my panel in front of me. I got Dr. Ruth. Um, I got Bishop Mark. Amen. I got the right Honorable Esther. And uh, and I got the, the Bishop S, Prophetess Donna uh, before me. And uh, these are individuals that are trying to get to the kingdom. Some are closer than the others. I'm not going to tell you who, but uh, but but they are they 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 they're nice looking people. I mean, they're almost as good looking as the preacher. But we're going to pray for them that the Lord will not uh, fail them in Jesus' name. Anyway, we want to look. We want to look at last night's message. Um, um, last night's message was an interesting one because the little that I had, God took it in so many different directions. Yeah. And I don't know if panel, I don't know if you realize there were some things that were even new to me as I was preaching it. God was just hitting me with the stuff. And uh, and and I sent it out there just as he gave it to me. So I came by here to let you know today, hallelujah, that we're in for a serious roller coaster this morning. Yeah. I, I, feel, yeah. I feel I feel I struggled all night to sleep. You know when you know you're just pregnant. I, I never been pregnant, but you're just pregnant with stuff and you mm. just can't sleep. You know, I used to look at my wife and she was going left and going right. She couldn't sleep. She had to get up and walk around because she was about to deliver. That's how I feel this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We got a word. We got a word. We got a word for you. So let's talk about last night. Um, can you tell me what text I used last night? James 4 verse 7. James 4 verse 7. And, and um, that's the one that says what? Resist the... Resist yourself, resist. To the devil, and he will flee from you. And he will flee from you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What was my subject? What was my title? Can you remember? Social distancing. Social distancing. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And 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 so there were there were three key points that I made. There were much more. We'll get into yes. that. Um, and and I related them to COVID nineteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And so what was my first point? PPE. That was the first one. No. Wash your hands. Good, your hands. Yes. The first one was washing your wash hands. Your hands. And what are we wa what are we washing off our it's hands? Dirt from sin. Sin. Dirt. We're washing sin away, dirt away, filth yeah. away. Amen. 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 And what do we wash our hands in? Because soap and water. The blood of Jesus. Oh, Boy, I tell you, Esther said it like she believed it. Come on. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You said it like a good old nineteen year old saint. Pastor, <laughs> blood of Jesus. Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so we wash our hands in the blood of Jesus because what can wash away our sins? Nothing. No, nothing but, but the Jesus. blood of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Amen. precious is the flow. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. Let me get into the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my second, my second point was what? So you have the correct PPE. That's right. You yeah. Use the correct PPE. PPE. Esther echoed it, and so uh, let's let's talk about that. Uh, what is what is the the PPE that was used that was used to fight this pandemic? What did they have to cover? Ephesians six put on the old armor of God. No, no, no. no I'm talking about what they used. The NHS used. Oh, oh, oh masks, no. gloves, mask, mask apron, visors, and thing over their head, yeah. something yeah. over their feet. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. And then and then so what did I parallel it? What did I liken it to? What did I compare it to? And the whole arm of God. Uh, so Ephesians 6 is mm -hmm. God's PPE. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. We got it. So we got to have our head 
covered. Come on now. Yeah. Uh -huh. With the helmet of salvation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have in the PPE? What else? The breastplate. The breastplate. Righteousness. What else? The sword. The, 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 the belt sword, of truth. The, sword of sheet, the belt of truth. Mm -hmm. What else? The shield of faith. Shield of faith. And your Helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation yeah. and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Of the gospel. The gospel. Hallelujah. Brethren, the Bible says that we have to put on the whole armor. Oh, yes, the whole armor. If we miss yeah. one, we yeah. miss yeah. viral overload. Overload. I love yes. that word. Let's talk about that. What did I say about viral overload? Can you remember? Um, you Wait, said that. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> you said that if you if you um, mix with um, the, the people or surfaces or with sin and dwell with it too long, even though you might look like you're a Christian, you've got it, you preach and you might save loads of people. But yet, if you are not concentrating and, and not shunning away from sin, it will overload you and then yes, sin right. will take over your life. And that's your viral overload. Overload. So, so some people are asymptomatic uh, and, and, and they, they very rarely are affected by the virus. Mm -hmm. Those people that worked on the front line, and we are all front line workers in the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Those of us that work on the front line, is that all right? We are mm -hmm. more yeah. exposed. Come on exposed. now. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, in, and therefore, when we're exposed to sin, uh, that now comes, uh, that, that, that sinful nature comes within us. And it covers us and it takes over. And the viral overload, brethren, we get so load up with sin that if we are not praying, if we are not confessing, yes. come on now, if we're not doing those things, then the problem we have is that we may die from viral yes. overload, which mm -hmm. is what most of the people on the front line died of. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. We yes. talked about the third one, social distancing. This was an interesting one because I tried to make the analogy in the sermon and, and everything that kept on coming back to me. Well, you all tell me. And, and, and Donna read it in 4, uh, James 4. James 4. What, run what? from sin. Run from it. Run. 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 run, run, run. run. Because <laughs> two meters, one and a half meters, one meter. Run from it. Run. The social run distancing from is it. one meter, one and a half meters, or two meters. The social <laughs> distancing run. is run. Run from <laughs> it. <laughs> Don't hang around sin. Yeah. Don't yes. stay where sin is. That's Don't hang right. around people that indulge in the willful sin. Mm -hmm. Rather it run a mile from sin. And when you run, make yeah. sure you run right into the arms of Jesus. That's Repent right. Amen. The devil. Amen. And he will Amen. flee. Hallelujah. From Amen. John, Amen. As, Barry John, as Barry Johnson said, you got to stay alert. As yes, said, yes, yes. It's in the text. It's in the stay text. alert. Yes. yes. Be yes. consistent. Come on now. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It will save your lives. Yes, Louis. I said, Elder Ray, that, you know, we're encouraged to do social distancing, to keep away from sin. But we also know that sometimes we are in the parameters that we can't keep the social distancing. Because when we Come want to now. reach God's children who yeah. are struggling with the virus, we've got to get close to them. So yes. when you get close yeah. to them, make sure you put on the whole armor. Oh, um, yes, yeah. girl. On your PPE. So yes. in the presence of the virus, the virus will not touch you because you're covered by the whole armor. Of Amen. Oh, right. Hey, guys. Ruth came in with fire today, man. <laughs> and she, she's 100% right. When we get into these yes. communities and we get into crack houses and we get into places where they're just burning weed and we get into places where people are stabbing and shooting and all this kind of stuff, brethren, we need to make sure we got on the PPE. Yes. We can and avoid, we can mm. avoid sin. Because yeah. the bottom line is, if we have to go and get people, put them out of sin, yeah. then we're yeah. going to have to go into places, come on now, where yeah. our lives will be threatened. Some of us are too quick. We're so afraid. We don't want to go in. We, we're timid. Places, yeah. If some mm -hmm. people in NHS didn't go into ICU, more people would be dead today. Yeah. Some of us yeah. have right. realized that we got to get into ICU. Oh, yeah, you're here. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And the good news is, is that the ventilator normally breaks down your lungs and mm. breaks down your ability to breathe after you come yeah. off it. The good news is our ventilator is the Holy Ghost. The, the, the Numa. 
that, that, that the Holy Ghost that breathes the breath of life into your lungs. There's somebody here. Amen. And I'm suggesting yes. when you go in there, hallelujah, and yes. you put them on the Holy Ghost ventilator, it won't be long. Yeah. And they'll now. be leaving there. Hallelujah. Yes. Stepping out. Yeah. Hey. And moving into higher ground. Ruth, you got me on fire today. Yes. Oh, you got me on fire. Um, well, <laughs> lastly, 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 let's talk about prayer. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about prayer. Mm-hmm. Heathering, Ephesians 6 and verse 18 tells us, pray always. Always. Yes. Always. yes. What, what did that mean to you guys? Ooh. Wow. Constant, com- constant communication with God. Right, right down. Yeah. Constant communication. And you said, like, if we're t- spending, if we're t- talking more to our friends than we're talking to God, something's wrong. So yes. we always have to be alert, always with God, just yeah. being our constant co- communication with Him throughout our mm-hmm. 24 hours of our day. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. Good and as I mentioned, if you're praying always, you can't be sitting and praying at the same time. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. If you're in prayer, yes. you can't wow. sit. Can't right. go together. Yeah. It takes a real wicked people, a person to sin and pray. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, when you're in constant communication Prayer. with Jehovah, brethren, the bottom line is you are in a good place. Yeah. And, and, right. and you have peace when there is a storm. Mm-hmm. So, brethren, Christ is speaking to you. Yeah. And you know the word Christ speaks in every crisis? Peace. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you for being uh, with me this week. Um, even Good though I gave you a hard time most of the time, it was, <laughs> I'm glad you're stuck to it. And uh, and I want to say that um, every day we were together, it just got better and better. Mm-hmm. And I, someone was suggesting that maybe we, I should, we should just have the mics open and we just preach just oh. like this. And you guys can just come in, in and out when they love the whole interaction <laughs> process. But um, maybe that's another day, another time. We, we can yeah. do that one prayer meeting evening and, and have a good discussion together. Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. Thank you again. Amen. Keep Amen. Your and thank and, uh, you. And let's get into the word tonight, uh, this, 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 this afternoon. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. And um, we will tackle... Uh, A very interesting text. We're talking about dynamite. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now, this is a text that I'm not familiar with. So I'm going to need you all who are Mm. in my my, my little panel to get me happy. Is that all right? And keep me going. Because, 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 you know, this is one of those texts that you can get bogged down on. But there is dynamite in this text. In this text, yeah. In this text. Let us pray. Father, speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, for the next few moments, we're going to unpack this text. Brethren, we're talking about dynamite. England is no stranger to dynamite. As a matter of fact, every 5th of November, you know, that is a time when there are explosions and there is dynamite. It is the anniversary, they say, of when guy folks wanted to blow up the parliament and all this kinds of stuff. We see explosions everywhere nowadays, sometimes on planes, sometimes on trains. Come on now. Sometimes we see them on our high streets. People are using dynamite. Dynamite is something that is made and it's normally a destructive thing that is used. Uh, Something that pulls things down, something that messes up situations. And I came by here to let somebody know uh, that God specializes in using dynamite. You didn't hear what I said. Um, 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 when I was when I was in California, I saw them blow up a building, a building that was messed up, a building that was old, had been there for a long time. And so they put the dynamite on the inside. Come on now. And they imploded that building. The building fell down flat and then they moved the rubble away. I'm talking about dynamite. Well, the text says in Ephesians three and verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power. That word there translated in the Greek is dynamite. According to his power that is at work within us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This text is powerful. I dare you to turn to your neighbor. And if there's no one sitting beside you, turn to your angel and say power. Come on, say power. Turn to the left that didn't hear you and say power. Amen. Power. Power. That word translated in the New Testament has two meanings. How many meanings? Two meanings. 
The first meaning is a word called exosia in the Greek. That word, that word means authority. Huh? So when God says, I give you power, he's saying, I give you authority. In Luke 9 and verse 1, that word authority is used. And it says that God gives authority over demons. Come on now. Gives authority over evil. And it gives us authority over sickness. Hallelujah. That, 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 that's a powerful text. And you know what? When I read that text, I realized that somehow as a last day church, we have missed the trick. We missed it, guys, because we focus so much on prophecy, making us the unusual church that we have missed the signs of the last day church. For Luke 9 and verse 1 tells us that God has given our church authority. Hallelujah. Brethren, some of us need to understand that we are not below the government. We are above the government. Come on now. Some of us need to understand that we are not below all of these politicians and all of these people in councils and all of these people that are making decisions because we got God in our lives. We're now the head and not the tail. Is somebody here? I'm suggesting that God has given us authority. Hallelujah. And that authority is to speak to evil and evil will leave. That authority is to pray for the sick and the sick be made well. Come on now. Those are signs of the last day church. And if we have people coming to our churches and they're not being made well, then we need to ask ourselves the question, are we truly doing what God has called us to do? Now, I'm not saying that every case will be made well, but I'm saying at least we should have some breakthroughs. If we were a football team and we were scoring no goals, then I guarantee you that the manager would be gone. Come on now. Then the players will be traded because the, the goal of football is to score goals. The goal of Christianity is to win souls. The goal of Christianity is to turn people's lives around. The goal of Christianity, hallelujah, is to let men and women know about a God who is coming back to save them. We need to have more hope than dope. Come on now. We need to open doors that are closed. We need to allow people to know that there is something special about these last days. We are not walk around like lumping a log just because of a pandemic, just because of Black Lives Matter. Some of us are looking down and looking angry. We're losing our salvation. Brendan, I came by here to tell you that the more darts the devil throws at this time lets me know that he's a wounded soldier let me know that he will never be a winner. Let me know that he's a defeated foe and that God, hallelujah, is a winner man for all time. You ought to walk around here with your chest puffed out. Come on now, with a word from the Lord and don't let nobody steal your joy. I don't care what Boris says. I don't care what Trump says. I don't care what Putin says. But all I care about is what God says. And he says, now unto him who is able, hallelujah, that word able suggests that brethren, we can do it. Everything is possible, hallelujah. That means that we are powerful, no matter what the situation is. He is able, he's able. I know God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. He healed the brokenhearted. He set the captives free. He made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. I'm saying he's able. The word able in the Greek is from the word dunamai, no most from the word power, which is dunamis. Hey, so dunamai suggests a dynamite explosion, but not on the level of dunamis, which is a supernatural explosion. I came by here to tell you, brethren, that based upon Ephesians 3, we ought to have dynamite. Hallelujah. We ought to be on fire. We ought to be able to implode and explode. When sin sees us, sin should take off running because we got dynamite to take care of the negative, disgusting attitudes of sin. When sinners see you coming, they should put down the whiskey bottle. They should put down the beer cans. They should put down the dope. Here comes Pastor Ray. Here comes Mark. Here here comes Esther, here comes Ruth, here comes Donna, here comes Wolverhampton Central. We should call them to order because of the power, the dynamite power that God has given his remnant church. And I don't care what anyone says, the last day church is a church with dynamite. Dynamite. The text says it unto him who is able. Brethren, you are not able without him. You didn't hear what I said. You are not able without him. Hallelujah. Brethren, the bottom line is with Jesus in the vessel, 
I can smile at the storm. Come on, somebody. Brethren, you better put a smile on your face. Brethren, don't let this pandemic and all these announcements turn your way. They tell me I can't fly. They tell me I can't go certain places. Brethren, that is just martial law that is about to happen in our society. And the brethren are just testing it now to see how we will react to martial law. Because if you read your Bible correctly, you will know that there's a time of trouble coming such as never before till the, since there was a nation. And the bottom line is, is that you think this is bad now? What they're going to do to us as people of God is going to shock us. And so don't be prepared that, that, to bow down like the, the three Hebrew boys. Be prepared to stand up because the God you serve is greater than anybody else on the planet Earth and any other being. Amen. So the text goes on to say uh, he's able to do immeasurably. Mm -hmm immeasurably what a word what a word what a word this is the word and i hope you understand this word brethren this word will make you shout i hope you got a shout in you i told you don't bring no high heels to church this morning i told you bring some flat shoes and if you're in the house take off your shoes because you're gonna get ready to shout immeasurably you didn't hear what i said in other words it cannot be measured hallelujah the power of God cannot be measured. Come on now. It cannot be measure, measured. It says immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Brethren, you ought to realize that the, the, that word is telling us, hallelujah, that God has multiple layers, hallelujah. And every time, every time you seem to be down, he brings in another layer. Every time you seem to be struggling, he brings in another layer. And every time you think you can measure it, he brings in another layer. More than your imagination, God just keeps on adding layer after layer. You thought you were broke last week, but now you got a little change. Come on, say amen. You thought that your marriage was on the rock or two days ago, but now here comes God and you're smiling. You, 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 thought, you thought your children were going mad and Lee and giving you a tough time. Here comes God. Every night they've been on Zoom listening to the word of God. I came by here to tell you, brethren, what God is doing is immeasurable. You cannot measure it. It says, the, 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 the Webster says, it's over and above. It's beyond. It's superior. Hallelujah. It's beyond any motion. It precedes action. Hallelujah. It goes beyond supernatural bounds. I'm reading from Webster. Hallelujah. It's excessive. It's above. It's more than necessary. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It surpasses all. Hallelujah. I came by here to tell you that that's talking about the grace of God. Come on now. Immeasurable. It is not, you cannot predict it. It's more than you can imagine. The grace of God will go into the jail and grab a murderer. The grace of God will go into the weed house and grab a drug addict. The grace of God will go into the mental institution and bring somebody out. The grace of God not only saves you, but it sustains you. And every day when we put on the armor of God, like we said last night, we need to pray, hallelujah, that God will apply his grace new every morning. In Jesus' name, it is immeasurable. Not only is the grace immeasurable, but the blessings. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. The blessings of God is, you know, this is our last one together. So let's get happy, brethren, because God has blessings for each one of us. Come on now. You ought to know that you can't measure God's blessings. Brethren, there was a time in my life when I was down trying to commit suicide. I, I blame God for everything. I thought there was no need to live on. But I came by here to tell you, brethren, when God found me, hallelujah, and God, because I couldn't find myself, God found me. The next thing I knew, I'm talking about the immeasurable blessings of God. The next thing I knew, the conference that let me go, pick me back up. Come on, say amen. Before I, I even realized what was going on, they had a TV program. at and um, is the biggest um, um, cable company in America. Brethren, the, the, I got a phone call one day. I was literally homeless when the phone call came. And the phone call came and, and he said, Pastor Ray, where are you? I said, I'm in LA. He said, good. You need to come to the at and studios. We want to run a program program based upon your preaching and your testimonies. You didn't hear what I said. And you can call it whatever you want. So I call the program Adventist Connects. And that is connecting with the community. And brethren, every Sunday, we had over 56,000 people watching the program. We had all of the choirs from the Adventist church, all of the singers. Uh, brethren, we didn't go out there and promote Adventism. We promoted God. Hallelujah. But the message was solidly Adventist. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? And brethren, God opened that door. And before I knew it, there's following about uh, two months 
months after starting that program, I was preaching in, in LA and, and, and uh, on La Brea. And while I was preaching there, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about the blessing of God. In the crowd was Little Richard. Little Richard was in the crowd and he came with his big old entourage and they sat down and I made my appeal and down the aisle came Little Richard and some of his entourage to give his heart back to Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Give his heart back to Jesus Christ. That day I left the church and I shook his hand and I prayed for him and I went home and I sat there and, and, and I didn't know what my life was going was gonna, to was gonna amount to. But the good news is, here comes Little Richard. My phone rings. I'm having Sabbath lunch. Little Richard calls and says, what are you doing, Pat? I said, man, I'm at home with the children. My marriage was struggling. My life had been a lie and a fake. And now all of a sudden, brethren, God was opening doors. He said, I'm going on an East Coast tour. And after hearing you preach today, I want you to come with me on the tour. I want you to be my chaplain on the East Coast tour. We're going to go from New Jersey to New York. Come on now, to Atlanta. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And boy, I sat there and I couldn't believe it. I said, well, what am I going to do with the children? He said, we'll pay for a babysitter. We'll make sure that the children are can get to school and back. And man, he paid for all of that. He made sure the kids loved it. They got everything they wanted that I wouldn't give them. They got. And then he took me. He said, meet me at the, 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 the car is going to pick you up in the morning at 4 o'clock a.m. Be prepared to go away for a few months. And brethren, let me tell you what happened. The car came at 4 a.m. The limo was almost as long as my street. Come on now. I got into the limo and I sat in there and little Richard and the folk were in the limo and I couldn't believe it. Just the day before, I was a nobody. Come on, say amen. Just the day before, I was wondering where my life was going to be. Just the day. I'm talking about the blessings of God being immeasurable. And now I'm about to travel first class. Come on now, from California to New York, sitting beside the legend, Little Richard. Hallelujah. He didn't want anybody else but his prayer man behind him. And every time the turbulence would hit and he would start saying, oh, Lord, save me. He say, pray, Patrick, pray. Hallelujah. And I bow my head and I start praying for him. And we traveled to the East Coast. Then we went to New Jersey. Hallelujah. Then we went and we traveled the whole New York. We met everybody. We did music with Will Smith and Mariah Carey. And at the end of the concert, we did the 4th of July in Ohio. And let me tell you, we had ordered 10,000 steps to Christ that he had had his picture put on the inside. And he said, Patrick, I'm going to sing Amazing Grace. And I want you to go up there and make an appeal that they will give their heart to Jesus. Brethren, I couldn't believe it. I told them this was the book that changed Richard's life. I told them this was the book that made a difference in his life and my life. And now today I'm offering this book to 10,000 people. There was about 25,000 people there. And brethren, you would not believe it. People started running forward to receive the book, Steps to Christ. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Immeasurable imaginable. I could never imagine what God would do. But I sit here today, hallelujah, a living witness of the power of God, the dynamite power of God. Hallelujah. Don't tell me there is no God. Don't tell me God isn't powerful. I don't care how many people are dying in COVID-19. More people are living. Hallelujah. Well, let me get to the rest of the text. Some of you look like food is, is about to take over your thought pattern. Let me get to it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, sometime I wish I was in a building where the Hammond organ was playing. Come on, somebody. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Mm, mm, mm. And so the text reminds us, the text reminds us, the text reminds us. Now, immeasurable, more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power. Here we go. We're doing dynamite now. According to his power, that is at work within us. Now, 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 some of you are going to struggle here. Some of you are going to struggle. Some of you are going to struggle. Because the power is not external, but it's internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, some of you are more concerned about what you look like on the outside. I know. I, I've seen some of you all when you just wake up. Come on now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know the way you look. Uh, you don't want to leave the house unless some makeup goes on your face. Or, or at least the men, at least you're groomed up. On the outside. But the sad reality is, uh -huh, is, is that the inside is where the issue is. And a lot of us have heart issues on the inside. A lot of us don't like people. A lot of us enjoy sinning on the inside. That is why our secret sins are what will keep us away from the kingdom of God. Because we can do it okay on the external. We can shout and jump. Come on now. Yeah, on the external. We can, we can, we can stand up and preach in the external. 
We can stand in front of our church members and look good with a Bible on our chest and have a little Sabbath walk and say, happy Sabbath, everybody. But I came by here to tell you, it's about the inside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because according to our text, the power, the dynamite must be on the inside. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You could only fake it for a while. Come on now. You could only fake it for a while. And then your true colors will show. I'm pausing for effect. Because we ought to know. We ought to know. We ought to know, brethren, that God sometimes has to expose us in order to save us. Because too many of us are operating in fake lives, in fake ways, lying our way to the kingdom. But your kingdom with your lies will not be heaven. It will be straight into the place called hell. Is someone out there understanding what I'm trying to tell you? I'm suggesting today, based upon our text, that the dynamite power is on the inside. And the good news is, is because the what happens on the inside is based upon the power of the Holy Ghost. Based upon Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, you shall receive power. I'm talking about dynamite power. After that, you know, hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost has come unto you. And brethren, let me say, in Acts chapter 1, I want to tell you, when the Holy Ghost fell, brethren, they were witnesses in Jerusalem. There were witnesses in Judea. And there were witnesses in the utmost parts of the world. Jerusalem represents in the church. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Judea represents on the outside of the church and, 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 and into the, the, the Gentile communities. And to the uttermost past means everywhere, all over the place. Come on now. I'm suggesting to you that when the dynamite power comes on in your life, hallelujah, you wouldn't have to be told to go out and witness. You wouldn't have to be told to go into the community. You wouldn't need revival. You would be a one-man revival all by yourself. Every time you walk by, fire, hallelujah. Every time you open your mouth, fire. Every time you sit down with people, fire. The things you watch on TV will change. The things you listen to in your car will change. The attitude you have towards your brother and sisters will change. Why? Because cloven tongues like a fire will rest upon you. And you can't do the evil things. I told you last night that one of the things, hallelujah, that COVID will do to you, it will take away your taste. And it will take away your smell. Well, I came by here to tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes into you, he will take away your taste. And he will take away your smell for sin. Hallelujah. The things I used to enjoy, I don't do anymore. The weed I used to smoke, I ain't smoking no more. The parties I used to go to, I ain't going no more. Hallelujah. God took away the taste from the inside out. When God changes a drug addict, he doesn't need a 12-step. He don't even need a two-step. All he needs is a one step to Jesus, hallelujah, and his life will be changed in Jesus' name. God will take away the taste from the inside out. But let me wrap this up because I'm looking at some of you all and you all look like you, you, you're really struggling my right here. Well, hallelujah. Here's, here is a barometer as to whether or not you got dynamite on the inside. The first thing is, uh-huh. What in your life is undone? I'm talking about for God. Ask yourself that question. What in your life is undone? The second question I want you to ask yourself as you think about, do I have this dynamite power? What wounds of others go unattended by me? What wounds of others go unattended by me? In other words, are you, are you one of those people that walk by on the other side when people really need your help? The third question, or the th third thing you need to ask yourself is what heartaches of others go uncomforted by me? What heartaches of others go uncomforted by me? I wish someone was here. And then the final one you need to ask yourself to see if you uh, are, are the recipient of Holy Ghost dynamite, dynamite is this. What needs of others go unmet? Because I do not listen to the Lord's leading. Uh -huh. Or I harbor sins that allows me to not be spiritually efficient. Brethren, ask yourself these questions. The good news is, hallelujah, is if you ask yourself the questions and you've answered no or answered like, I don't think I am, then guess what? Turn it over 
to Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn it over to him. Tell him to fill you with dynamite and your life will change. Well, I think I told the story when I came the last time to your church. Hallelujah. Um, but I'm going to tell it again because it fits right in here. It's called, well, it's not called, but dad made me a bicycle. And the bicycle that he made me, remember back in the days, Mark, we used to make these bikes where we got the handlebars for somewhere else. We got the, a frame from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, we got, we got the wheels from somewhere else and we got the chain from somewhere else. Well, you know, we were a poor family from Shepherd's Bush and we couldn't make, we couldn't afford to buy bikes for, for four children. So dad had to make me a bike. I'm talking about dynamite. I'm talking about power. Mm -hmm. And so here comes my dad one day and painted up this bike real nice and gives me a bike. Now, at this point, I'm really excited. My bike doesn't look as good as the others, but the fact that daddy has made it, well, I wish someone knew what I just said. I'm pausing for effect. The fact that daddy has made it lets me know that I can trust my bike because I trust my dad. I'm talking about dynamite and I'm talking about power. And so now I'm riding the bike that daddy gave me. It was beautiful. But now watch... Um, it got dark in the wintertime around three o'clock in the afternoon. You all know the story. I'm around three o'clock in the afternoon. You all know the story. And, 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 and so I needed a light for my bike. So I told my dad, who was my hero, is that all right? And I said, dad, uh, I, need, I need a light for the bike. Well, my dad, if you're over 50, you're going to know what I'm about to say. If you're under 50, then you're going to have to Google it and figure it out. So my dad now, my dad bought me what we call a dynamo. He found it. He actually didn't buy it. He didn't buy it. He found it in a scrap place. And what it is, it's a silver thing, and it has a rotation head at the top that goes round. My dad put a little wire that he had in his toolbox at the end of that dynamo. And then he put a bulb at the end of the wire, and he taped it to my handlebars. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about dynamite. I'm talking about God's power. And you shall receive power. Now, now that, that doesn't mean you go and get power. That means you received power. And everything so far in this analogy, I've received. I received a bike. Now I received a light. Well, I wish someone knew what I was saying. And so, and so I'm riding my bike now, but I didn't realize that in order for me to receive power for the bulb to be lit, I had to keep on pedaling. Is that all right? And that rotated the wheel. Come on now. And, and, and the little wheel rubbed against my big wheel. And then the current went down through the wire and lit my bulb. And it gave me power. I wish someone knew what I was saying. <laughs> and in the Greek, the tense used there is the genitive tense, where two things are rubbing together. Mm -hmm. It brings forth friction. Now, it could either be evil friction or friction that causes a dynamite. Because dynamite has to be lit. You didn't hear what I just said in order to be effective. And so here I am, I'm pedaling. It's dark outside. But now as I'm pedaling, the light is now illuminating the whole street. At the end of my street, it went up a little way. It wasn't a big hill, but it was enough to struggle with my little legs. So that means now that the, because the power had to be within me in order for it to be outside of me. I wish someone knew what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means, that means, that means that the more I'm climbing up the hill, the dimmer the light. But I couldn't stop pedaling because I needed the power that was within me to manifest itself on the out. You didn't hear what I said. I wish someone would say what I'm saying. On the outside. Come on now. And that gave me light. And as I'm going up the hill, the closer I get to the summit of the road, are you hearing what I'm saying? The dimmer the light, but I can't stop pedaling because I need power. I need power to see and I need power to make sure I don't hit nothing else. I need power to illuminate the street. I need power. And so I'm pedaling and the pain in my legs. I'm bringing, but like Whitney Phipps, I was climbing up the rough side of the mountain, but I had to keep going because I needed the power. I needed a dynamite power. Hallelujah. I need that generative power, that generator power. And the power had to come from within. If I never had it within, I couldn't light the bulb on the outside. And so I'm pedaling up now. And the closer I get to the summit, the pain is going. But in order to see the summit, I made sure I got to keep pedaling. It got dim, but I kept on going. It got hard, but I kept 
kept on going. It got difficult, but I kept on going. Will her, Wolverhampton, Stoke Churches, I came by here to tell you this morning, keep pedaling. Don't stop pedaling. Pedal as hard as you can. Make sure you got the Holy Ghost on the inside. Your pedaling is to pray every day. Your pedaling is to share your faith every day. Your pedaling is to open God's word every day. Keep pedaling, brethren, because you shall receive. And after that, the Holy Ghost has come unto you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, if I ended it there, it wouldn't be good. So let me end it right here. On the way down the hill, because I put the work in going up the hill, now I didn't even have to pedal because my bike was fixed wheel. The pedals went all by itself. Come on, somebody. I just put my legs up on the crossbar and I let that bike go down the hill. And I came by here to tell somebody that you may be struggling now. It may look like your life is coming to an end. It may look like the pandemic has got you. It may look like lockdown has messed with your mind and your mental illness. It may look like your marriage is on the rock and your money is gone. It may look like your job is about to let you go. But brethren, put the time in with power going up. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you that it won't be long and you'll be watching yourself come down the hill, not even having to do anything because God says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God said, I will do it for you. Hallelujah. You don't have to pedal. You don't have to fight in this war. Brethren, today Jericho is yours. Hallelujah. Today the promised land is yours. Today the Red Sea is yours. Come on, somebody. I came by here to tell you it won't be long. Hallelujah. And you'll be going down the hill rejoicing that it was worth it pedaling all the way up. The difficulty, the hardship, the tough times, it was worth it. Brethren, hang on in there. Lockdown is being eased and we're going to get out of lockdown and we're going to make it to the kingdom of God. Why? Because he's able. He's able. I know he is able. He's unmeasurable. Hallelujah. He's my God. And I tell you what, he has never failed. Well, I'm done. It was a great seven days. But if I preach this hard for seven days and you'll go to hell, it's on you. Because the bottom line is, is that you heard enough through the singing, through the preaching, through even the children's stories to make a decision for Jesus Christ. You are a mad person if you and this pandemic and race situation that we're facing now, brethren, you all will be mad not to accept Jesus Christ as your savior from sin. And so I appeal again today. For my last appeal, I don't know who you are. You may be someone that attends church and you're not baptized. I want to tell you, you will not make it to the kingdom of God. The only, the only heaven you know is right here. But if you give your heart to Christ today and say, look, I want to be born again. All you have to say is that God will do the rest. If you say that, I guarantee you that he will fix your situation. And boy, before you know it. You will have life and life more abundantly. Let me say this to you real quick. As you make your decision today, I'm going to invite you on the chat on YouTube and the chat here on Zoom. If you haven't given your heart to Christ, then make sure you just put down, I want to give my heart to the Lord. You're someone who attends church, but you've never been baptized, never been born again, never Allow the dynamite of the Holy Spirit to take over your life. Today, make that decision. Second appeal I want to make is for that individual that used to have fire, that dynamite, but is going out. Fire burns, but smoke chokes. And some of us are choking folk and choking ourselves. And today I beg you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to write down in that chat and say, Pray for me. Pray for me because my fire is going out. Praise God, it hasn't gone out. Hallelujah, but it's going out. And then the final one I want to say to you today. The first appeal is you're accepting Christ as your savior for the first time. You're a visitor, you're someone who attends church and you haven't given your heart to him. Do it today. The second one is for that church member whose fire is going out. Give it to him. Give it to him. 
and let him keep your fire ignited. Let him put a dynamo in your life. Come on now. And then light your light. But a final one today. I just believe that there's somebody who I'm speaking to. And you've tried the power of God. And it seems like you're having a tough one. Seems like you're having a hard one. You're in a deep, dark place. And sometimes you don't even want to come to church. You don't even want to hear preacher preach. You don't want to hear nothing about God. Spiritually, you're in a real bad place. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that God would lift the depression off you. I want to pray for you that, hallelujah, the lockdown of sin and the virus of sin will not be your plight any longer. And I want to tell the devil to take his knee off your neck. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, wow, you are able. Hallelujah, immeasurable. More than we can imagine. You are our God. You've reminded us today that, Lord, you've got everything in control. But like the word says in Ephesians 6, we need to stay alert. And so today, Lord, I'm asking you to be with each one of those groups. Be with the first group, Lord, who needs to make a decision for Jesus. I know that enemy is going to tell you that he's not worth it or you can do it next time. But then we don't have next time. Every day I turn on my TV, more people are dying. Don't play with God. Make the decision today. And let me say this. When you make the decision, you realize that it's not a difficult decision at all. Be born again. Give your heart to God. Then, Lord, I want to pray for those church members whose fire is going out or they never even had any dynamite from the beginning of their journey. Ignite them today and allow them to be explosive for you. And lastly, Lord, that person who's in that deep, dark place, that person, Lord, who's tried everything and everything seems to be failing, that person, Lord, who's confused about whether you're in their life or not, go where they are and make yourself real for them. Open doors that are closed. Bless them immeasurably. And Lord, work a miracle in such a way that they will know it's you. And then they will get out of the stupor and depression that they're in and ask you, what must I do to be saved? Lord, thank you for this week that we've had together. No longer are we spiritually in lockdown. We're now, Lord, moving towards the kingdom of God. For Lord, it's in your name, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, guys, thank you. Um, I think the email will still work, ray at wolverhamptoncentralsda.org.uk. If you'd like to leave a prayer request there personally, I would love to continue to pray for you as I leave you guys. Um, and the prayer rods will pray for you. Whatever the problem, whatever it is, just send it to that. Or, um, of course, some of you have me on Facebook, some of you got me on WhatsApp. You can send it still there. And I'll be happy to pray for you. If you're giving your heart to life today, to God today, make sure you contact the pastor. Make sure you contact one of the elders and they will be, I mean, I know they will help you because I know this church and they love to see people give their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. You take care of yourself. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen and amen. One thing I always like to encourage the congregations when we've heard a message is that you contemplate on what you've just listened to. Sometimes we hear a message in church and as soon as the benediction is given, there's a lot of chat and a lot of noise and a lot of things going on in the background. And sometimes we, we, we lose the essence of what we just listened to. So let me encourage everybody. We've just heard a powerful message from the Lord. And before you, and before you rise up and start to get, prepare your lunches and everything else, just contemplate about what you've just listened to. And let the Holy Spirit convict you of something that you heard in that message. Pastor Ray, thank you so much for your ministry this week to Area 6, Wolverhampton and Stoke-on-Trent districts of churches. 
we just want to thank you so much. We want to praise and thank the Lord for using you this week. And we thank you that you accepted the call to Amen. speak to us this week. We've been blessed through the week, again, with the children and all the other special items. We thank you for your ministry. Amen. We thank you that God has used you to touch each one of us. Amen. I know that many of us have been blessed and convicted as well by something that you have said in each of your messages. You know, you said something at the beginning of that message, and it was the goal of Christianity is to win souls. Yeah. Why else did God raise up the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Thank you. It was to preach and teach the, seven, the, the, the three angels' messages. Amen. Revelation chapter 14, to win souls for the kingdom. So, Pastor Ray, thank you so much for your ministry. You've been a blessing to us this week, and we look forward Maybe one day soon you'll be back and you'll be blessing us again. Amen. Praise so God. May God continue to bless you, Pastor Ray, as you continue in your ministry for him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.